This is a Roka Coop kite, which was a, a Chinese kite. And in the villages, they would have Roka Coop battles. Now, their kites would be maybe, um, maybe 30 feet across, maybe bigger. And they'd take teams of people, and they'd have, they'd have all their people that were um, flying the kite as a team to hold this thing in the air. And the idea was to knock the others out of the air. And this is a this is a smaller version of it, but in it, this flies in really lightweight wind. So, but that's a Rokoku um, by its shape and, and how it works. And these are beautiful kites, and they're easy to fly. This is a nice kite because I can fly this in, in very little wind at all, and that because of the weight of it. The Sea Devil here. What's really fun to do with this kite is when you're in some place like Lake Michigan, you've got a good. If you've got the breeze coming from the right direction, you can take the kite out and you bring it down. You set it in the water. You take it down about halfway into the water and then you just start slowly pulling and it looks as if it's coming right out of the water into the sky and it, that's just that's fun this kite uh, when we went to Grand Haven about three or four years ago I had enough kites to last me a lifetime and when we went up I said I took them I said I'm not buying a kite this year I've got enough I don't need any more we're in good shape and she, she kind of looked at me and laughed and went on. And we got up there. And there's this fellow here, he's from Tasmania. And Robert Brasington is his name. And Robert comes in, and I never heard of the guy, let alone met him. And he's got these kites. And it was like, oh my goodness, look at these things. They were absolutely gorgeous. And I, the first day there, I looked at, his kites were up, and he had some in the air, and he had some sitting on the ground, and I'm looking at these things just going crazy over them. And finally, before it's over with, I just, I, I had to buy one. So, this is a box kite. And what would happen is, when the guys went down over the ocean, the ocean's pretty big. Well, today we got all sorts of these devices we can track and find them with. Mm -hmm. But the uh, back then they didn't have that. So what they did was they developed a radio. And it was called the Gibson Girl. I've got one in the basement. And the Gibson Girl radio is is a, a crank radio that would put out the signal, and you held it between your knees. That's why it's called the Gibson Girl. It had the the shape of the Gibson Girl, which was popular back in the in that day. And, but they had to have a way to get antenna up because by itself the radio would only transmit five or ten miles. Well, they had to get an antenna in the air. So they had two ways of doing that. One was either a balloon, and they had a, in, in the kit that came with it, they had a hydrogen balloon that they could, they could blow up uh, with, with air. It was made by the water, they had a generator there that would fill it. Or a kite. And by using the kite and, or the balloon, they could get a 500 mile radius signal out, which they could be found with. And guys' lives were saved because of these things. So they developed this box kite, simple box kite, uh, and they would attach it to the antenna of the radio, which was a wire, which is a real fine wire, and that would take it up in the air. And it set up for, uh, if it was a 7 to 20 mile an hour wind here, 15 to 40 mile an hour wind up here, and so you could get this thing up in the air, and that was their antenna. The next kite I buy will be something that's going to be unusual and different. Just because I, I, that's what I like. I like things that are different that you normally don't see um, that, I, that I'd want to put in my collection.